Hi, Steve Arnold here from Post Processing Mastery. Now, here are three Photoshop layers and masking mistakes that I see people making regularly, but which you really should avoid. The running theme with these three photo editing mistakes is that they all relate to a destructive workflow. Whenever possible, you really want to be using non-destructive post-processing techniques because this enables you to go back to previous points in your workflow to make changes without having to redo everything else you did after that point. So if you like this video, remember to hit the thumbs up button to let me know so I can keep making more just like it. And also subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell notification icon so you can be notified every time I publish a new tutorial like this one. And if you want to start learning about one of the most important Photoshop skills that you can have as a landscape photographer, then just click the link in the description below to download my free PDF guide and introduction to luminosity masking. So with that said, let's get on to mistake number one and that is not using adjustment layers. So the mistake happens when, say we've got this image uh, on the screen at the moment that I've just got in Photoshop, and we've got a background layer. I've just opened this straight out of Lightroom. And so there's had no other edits in Photoshop made to it yet. So what people tend to do is under the image adjustments menu, you'll see we've got all these different adjustments that we can make and low, uh, levels and curves are two that I personally use regularly. So I'll just show you uh, an example using the levels adjustment. And yeah, so basically what we've got when we open that is we've got these control points here that we can adjust and just increase the contrast in the image. So we've got quite a nice adjustment there. And when I hit okay, what we see is that that adjustment has now been applied to the background layer. Now the problem with that is that for one, we can't actually go back and change that, uh, that adjustment now without literally undoing the whole thing. So, you know, we couldn't open that levels adjustment panel back up and make further adjustments. Um, what we'd have to do is actually just go to edit and undo completely and then start the whole thing again. So edit, uh, sorry, image adjustments levels and go back and do that. Uh, the other thing with doing it this way, straight onto the background layer, is that you can't mask the adjustment in or out of the image. So you can't apply that adjustment to some parts of the image, but not others, which you could do if you used an adjustment layer. So let me just show you what I would do uh, instead of what I just showed you there. Down the bottom here, we've got this uh, this icon which pops up this menu of all the same adjustments that are available via the image adjustments menu. But this time from this, uh, from you know, loading them from this icon down here, if I add the levels adjustment, then you'll see it creates a new layer, which is the levels one adjustment. So here we can make similar changes to the contrast. And then once we're happy with that, we can close it, we don't have to but now that's something that we can toggle on and off or we can blend the opacity of this adjustment layer to uh, to kind of reduce the effect without removing it completely. Or we can take a black brush into the layer mask and actually just brush it away from certain parts of the image like so. And so this is, you know, basically I'm just brushing this effect out of the uh, the building here in the grass. So if I toggle the layer off and on again, we can see the uh, the effect has now just been applied in the bottom of the foreground in the, in the sky. So that's mistake number one, which is not using adjustment layers. And I know people are making this mistake because people ask me questions. I get a lot of questions about uh, Photoshop from my email and uh, YouTube subscribers. And so this is something that I know people are doing. So I would encourage you if you are just making these adjustments directly to a regular pixel layer or uh, you know a copied like a duplicate of your background the duplicate is slightly better than just doing it straight onto your background but not much better just use adjustment layers wherever possible so that you can maintain that non-destructive workflow so that brings us on to mistake number two and that mistake is not using smart filters on pixel layers where a pixel layer is uh, unavoidable so situations that this might arise in is if you want to do some sharpening to your image. So you, you know, there's no way to do image sharpening 
using adjustment layers. So you have to create a pixel-based layer to do that. So what you might do at the end of your workflow is create a layer that you're going to sharpen onto. So select all, edit, copy merged, edit paste. And so that gives us this layer at the top here that I'm going to call sharpening. And yeah, so we've got that layer. And now we want to run, for example, a uh, sharpening filter. Let's use smart sharpen just for something quick. And we just accept the, well, let's stick one pixel, 300%. That'll probably do. Uh, click OK. The amount of sharpening that I'm applying here isn't really, doesn't really matter. It's not the sort of point of what I'm trying to get across. So here, just applying that amount of sharpening directly to that layer. If I toggle it off and on, you can see the effect. If you're viewing this on a large screen, probably you're going to see it more than if on a small screen. So we've added that sharpening effect, but the problem is now I can't go back and tweak those values of the, uh, of the sharpening uh, um, adjustment. And that is because we've just run that sharpening filter straight onto the sharpening layer without having first made it a smart object. So what I'll just do to show you how that works is just gonna press Command Z to undo the sharpening. Um, you can right click on the layer and choose convert to smart object, or you can just go filter uh, via the filter menu and choose uh, convert for smart filters. That does exactly the same thing. And now you'll see we've got this layer that's got the little icon down in the bottom corner that tells us this is a smart object. Now what happens if I go to the filter, sharpen, smart sharpen, if I run that, it's going to keep the same settings as before. If I just hit that again, then it's going to run the sharpening filter on this layer. But now it's done it as like a separate entity uh, down here. So we've got smart filters and smart sharpen. Uh, this is something we can actually turn off if we want, or we can actually now double click on the smart sharpen filter in the layers panel. And if we wanted to, we could reduce the amount of sharpening and then click OK. And so that basically makes the filter completely editable, even after you've applied the filter at the settings that you first choose. Now, the added benefit of this is that you actually get a layer mask that you can use to mask out the smart filter. So in this case, the smart sharpen. So what we can do here, if I just grab the brush tool and got a black foreground color in the brush there, what I can do if I wanted to, I could actually just remove the sharpening from the building here just by brushing and masking that out using that uh, smart filter layer mask. And again, that wouldn't have been possible without first converting to smart filter or what you could have done um, is add a layer mask to the actual layer itself and then mask it out. Uh, you can do that whether or not you convert to a smart filter, a smart object first, but this way you get to separate it into having a layer mask for the filters and a layer mask for the layer itself. If you wanted to get really kind of down into the fine details when it comes to blending the effect of this layer in to the main image. Okay, so that brings me on to mistake number three, which I see people making. This is probably the most common mistake that I see people make all the time. And again, I'm basing this off of the number of questions that I get on the subject. Um, and well, what I should say is the number of times I receive the same question whenever I show a tutorial that involves creating many, many layers. People always ask me, how do I flatten my image and how do I merge all those layers at the end? So what they're talking about, let me just add another couple of quick levels adjustments just for the purpose of this demonstration. So just some random adjustments here. Maybe I'll add a curves adjustment to add a bit of uh, brightness, that'll do. So people get to the end of their workflow and they're at the stage where they've got a whole bunch of layers and I think the reason people are asking me how do I merge all these layers into one is because then 
they're wanting to like save this file as a, a finished image that they're going to then share online, i.e. as a JPEG. Now, one way that you could do that if you wanted to is just right click in the layers panel and either choose merge visible or flatten image. Flatten image will give you all of those adjustments uh, and it will kind of bake them into the new background layer. Now, the reason this is a mistake is because now, once you get to this point, if this is your master copy of your final edited image, if you wanted to come back to this at some point in the future and adjust any of the adjustments or you know, make any changes to anything that you've done, you know, if, for example, if you see that you've um, added some contrast or you've overexposed some highlights somewhere and you want to just fix that up a bit, you can't actually go back and recover those layers. So I'll just press Command Z to undo that. The actual mistake here, there's not really anything to show as such. The mistake is thinking that you have to merge all of these layers once you get to the end of your workflow and you finish processing your image. What I recommend doing is saving your finished image, uh, keeping like a master copy of this as a PSD or a TIFF file. So when you go to the File Save menu, um, then you're going to want to save it in a PSD or a TIFF format, which is going to uh, allow you to sort of reaccess these layers next time you come to open your finished image. And then if you want to create a copy of your finished image as a JPEG, if you want to export a JPEG so you can put it on Facebook, because Facebook, for example, won't accept a PSD file or a TIFF file, uh, you know, you need to export a JPEG for that. What you actually will do um, is, well, one way of doing it is to export. So go to the file, export, export as menu. And then you'll select JPEG from this drop down. And you'll choose the quality, you'll choose the image size in pixels. Always convert to sRGB and embed color profile. Uh, that means, yeah, that's going to allow the image to actually look good by the time it gets online. Um, that's kind of like the, the standard color profile for web browsers. And then you'll export the image and you'll save it as a JPEG. And then that'll be your finished JPEG that you'll be uh, able to share online and do what you want with. So with that said, just one quick full recap. Uh, the first mistake, which is not using adjustment layers. So you know, if you want to maintain a totally non-destructive workflow, then I would always recommend using adjustment layers wherever possible instead of applying adjustments to pixel based layers. Second mistake is not converting your pixel layers to a smart object when you're going to run a filter on them. And the third mistake, which I really want people to stop doing is uh, merging all of their layers before they save their PSD file, because that's going to prevent you from being able to come back and make any changes to any of the edits individually. Uh, should you notice a problem or notice something you want to change later on. So with that said, I hope you found this video useful. I think I kind of talked a bit longer than I wanted to, um, but hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully you found this useful and you're going to stop making these mistakes if you were making any of them and you'll be able to maintain that totally non-destructive Photoshop workflow.